A comfortable abode with a gorgeous view of the Mediterranean Sea will serve as a perfect rain shelter. Well, this is what a real estate advertisement might have looked like for Neanderthals 100,000 years ago. Welcome to the weird and wonderful caves you could live in. Or not. Of course, back then, neither real estate and advertising had been invented yet. Never mind the fact that Neanderthals couldn't build houses and often lived in caves. Yet, one of those caves looks an awful lot like a residential building. It's situated inside a high limestone cape called the Rock of Gibraltar. If the Neanderthals had had an economy, the caves inside this rock would have cost a bundle. Navigators discovered it in 1907. They just spotted a big hole inside the fortified rock. For many years, scientists have studied this place and found some traces of Neanderthals. They discovered ancient tools in the cave and bones of old animals. But the coolest thing was, they found four caves inside the rock. It was like a residential complex. Neanderthals lived alongside neighbors and helped each other hunt and fish. They created feather decorations and painted abstract drawings on the walls. Imagine our ancient predecessors hanging out in these caves 100,000 years ago. And now, scientists hang out there and study the primeval past of Neanderthals in detail. At the end of 2021, archaeologists uncovered a gap inside one of the caves leading to an unknown tunnel. They crawled through this hole and opened a new space under the cave roof. This place has been closed off from the outside world for over 40,000 years. And it seems it was one of the most prestigious apartments in the entire mountain complex. It has high ceilings with ancient stalactites. The ruined stone curtains divided the apartment into several rooms. Scientists also found the remains of ancient animals and scratches on the walls. It seems that Neanderthals had never lived here, but they used to visit this place. Archaeologists found the shell of a sea snail called dog whelk. One of the Neanderthals brought it here for some reason. But the primary owners of this place were hyenas. These caves show that Neanderthals were closer to humans than to monkeys. They had a way of life and even some customs. There's still a lot of work ahead, and scientists hope to find new rooms inside this rock. Meanwhile, in 2003, archaeologists discovered another early dwelling on the Isle of Flores in Indonesia. Among the green jungle, they found a cave with ancient tools. At first, everyone thought the human ancestors lived here. But then, scientists discovered an unusual skeleton of an adult. A thorough analysis showed the skeleton belonged to a 30-year-old woman, three and a half feet tall, just above the waist of an average adult. The woman's weight was equal to the weight of an adult shepherd. The skeleton didn't belong to Neanderthals or Australopithecines. It was a new unknown species, which scientists called Homo floresiensis, or simply the hobbit. Also, there were remains of unusual ancient animals in the cave. It was an elephant the size of a cow, some large storks, and giant rats. Archaeologists have found out that hobbits were not the owners of this place. The main inhabitants were the rats the size of a cat. Maybe they were fighting the hobbits. Some analysis shows that Homo florensiensis wasn't our direct ancestor. They were in a separate branch of evolution. The hobbit skeleton looks more like that of a monkey than of modern humans. In 2009, in the dense jungle of Vietnam, archaeologists discovered San Don, the largest cave in the world. If you go inside the cave and shout, you'll hear your echo a long time. In some places, the height of this cave reaches half the height of the Empire State Building. And the total area is larger than one central block of New York. Sun Don is one of the three caves in the Vietnamese jungle. Many intricate mazes connect these caves. Inside, you can find unique plants and trees that live separately from the outside world. It's a real underground jungle. In some places, you can find collapsed ceilings that let the sunlight in. Besides unusual trees and plants, ancient stalactites hang there. Some limestone deposits are more than 450 million years old. They were here even before dinosaurs appeared. There are also many rivers in the cave. Rainwater coming down from holes in the ceiling has formed them. Fast streams resemble slides in a water park. They lead to unknown underground labyrinths. Scientists have studied only a small part of all these caves. The next unusual cave is in New Zealand. Hundreds of thousands of fireflies live inside. 
Each of them glows with a blue light. Together, they light up the cave. It may seem to you that you're on another planet, but you can't stay there for a long time. Special air measuring devices are everywhere. Scientists monitor the level of carbon dioxide necessary for the normal existence of fireflies. These insects are sensitive to the environment. If there are many people in the cave, or they stay there too long, the park staff will ask them to leave the place. It's like you're literally stealing oxygen from the fireflies. We've seen some pretty amazing caves so far, but how about a scary one? We're going to the desert of Yemen's Almara province. What we're looking for is not a cave, it's just a black hole in the ground right in the middle of the desert. It's big, the size of a basketball court. It's not its size that can scare you, but what's inside. Scientists are still not sure what it is. From the depths of this black abyss, a disgusting smell of rotten eggs constantly comes out. And sometimes, you can hear some strange, frightening sounds. The blackness of the giant hole in Yemen absorbs all the sun's rays, so you won't see what's there even with a powerful flashlight. People flew over this place by helicopter. They filmed using drones and the most powerful lenses, but they didn't catch anything except darkness. It looks like a big ink spot in the middle of golden sand. The locals are afraid to approach this place. They believe the cave leads to another dimension where evil creatures live. At the moment, the giant hole in Yemen is one of the most poorly studied and mysterious phenomenon of nature. How did it appear? How old is it? Where does it lead? Scientists are trying to find the answers to these questions. There are theories that the hole appeared because of construction work. Geologists drilled the soil nearby in search of minerals. It could have caused fluctuations in the Earth's crust and collapsed the surface. But no one can prove this theory. Yet. And now, imagine a place where sunlight has not penetrated for more than 5 million years. There's little oxygen, and it's cold and damp. Still, life is born in this place. Not only microbes and bacteria, but also something bigger. The living conditions in this cave are very different from the usual ones. So, in a sense, this cave is like another planet. It's the Movil Cave in the southeast of Romania, near the Black Sea. The entrance is a small hole in the ground. Inside, a tunnel leads deep below the surface. The levels of hydrogen sulfide and carbon dioxide are above normal inside the cave. The air here is half as much oxygen as on the surface. People can't be here without an oxygen mask. But other creatures living here can. The cave is home to 48 species of living organisms. 33 of them are unknown. Here, you can meet some unusual insects white snails and white spiders, millipedes with huge whiskers, transparent shrimp, and unique species of leeches. They all live here thanks to the little bacteria autotrophs. They absorb carbon dioxide and release food particles. Bacteria feed on it. Other larger organisms feed on these bacteria, and some bigger organisms eat those little ones. In the end, everyone gets food. In this cave, evolution has created a biological system separate from the rest of the world. So what comes to your mind when you hear the word Antarctica? Most likely, cold, snow, ice, and penguins. <laughs> Yet, this is one of the least explored regions in the world that hides many strange and unique things. Check them out! You don't have to go to Antarctica to see this weird thing. All you need to do is open Google Earth and move to one of the southernmost islands of Antarctica, King George Island. Recently, internet users have noticed a large and pretty strange cave entrance there. Where does this wide, dark passage lead? People started making suggestions. It's the entrance to a secret base or some laboratory. This is the part of the spaceship that crashed there thousands of years ago. This is the door to the ancient city of Antarctica. Perhaps there's a giant rock mountain with an ancient cave beneath all this snow and ice. Well, there's some ideas. Users have calculated the approximate dimensions of this cave. It might be about 74 feet high and 250 feet wide. You could hide a Boeing passenger jet in there. Nature probably created this entrance. This is a logical explanation, but there are two strange factors. First, take a look at the foot of the mountain. It seems that there are steps there. They're dark in color, as if they're made of stone. 
And if you look closely, you can notice something similar to human footprints. Has anyone entered this cave? Or maybe someone is still living there now. The second oddity is the disappearance of the mysterious finding. For the first time, people noticed it in a Google Maps snap in 2007. Then the entrance disappeared. Then it reappeared a few years later. After that, it vanished. And in 2022, people saw it again. Perhaps old snow melts, a new layer falls, and then the wind blows it away and the cycle repeats. But the alleged steps leading deep into the cave make one doubt the natural origin of this tunnel. You can easily find the coordinates on the internet and visit the cave via Google Earth. You might see something there and tell the world. There's another strange thing people discovered with the help of Google Earth. In 2020, one user found a strange object that looked like a giant ship 100 miles off the coast of Antarctica. It was covered with ice and snow and lying on its side. It looked like a cruise ship. You could notice the windows, the deck, and the bridge. But not all people agreed with this. Some claimed it was a spaceship. Others said it was some kind of secret building. The user who first noticed the ship stated that its size was about 400 feet, which is the perfect length for a passenger vessel. But what is this ship doing in such a remote place in the middle of a glacier? How did it get here? Who was its captain? No one has found the answers to these questions yet. In 2016, people using Google Earth discovered a photo of an unknown sea monster floating off the coast of Antarctica. This creature resembled a giant squid with a length of about 200 feet. This is slightly shorter than three train cars. Just imagine this kraken swimming in Antarctica's dark icy waters and dragging to the bottom everything it meets on its way. Maybe it's the great and terrible Chulu, or one of its offspring. You will quickly notice this blood-red waterfall among Antarctica's endless, dazzling white landscapes. Don't worry, it's not blood. For many centuries, the waterfall has been painting snow in a bright red color. The stream flows straight out of a white iceberg. Let's look inside and find out what's happening there. Millions of years ago, there was a small crystal clear pond. But then a glacier formed around it. A thick layer of ice and snow blocks sunlight, heat, and oxygen access. For millennia, the reservoir remained in this cold vacuum. But at one point, the water made a hole in the icy wall and broke out. When this salty water comes into contact with oxygen, it immediately turns scarlet or rusty. Antarctica is the only place where you can find such a unique natural phenomenon. One of the driest places on Earth is located in Antarctica. It's one of the most lifeless deserts in the world, the McMurdo Dry Valleys. In this desert, you won't see the scorching sun, hot sand, and cacti. A desert means a place with a lack of precipitation and life. The McMurdo Dry Valleys meet these parameters. But this place is also unique for Antarctica, since you won't find glaciers there. Despite the frost, ice can't form in the desert because it hasn't rained for millions of years there. It also never snows. A strong wind coming from the mountains reaches speeds up to 200 miles per hour. It would be difficult for you to stay on your feet there. The wind is filled with moisture. It heats up and evaporates all the liquid and snow in the desert because of its high speed. Only dry air reaches the ground. But you can find several lakes there. They don't freeze, only thanks to the high concentration of salt. The water is so salty that large life forms can't develop there. But scientists have found microscopic organisms near the lakes. 20 million years ago, Antarctica was filled with swamps and trees and swarming with insects and animals. But now, it resembles the surface of Mars, literally. Scientists and astronauts are exploring such regions as the McMurdo Dry Valleys, since the natural conditions there are similar to those on the Red Planet. So, before you go to Mars, you can practice living in similar places on Earth. Also, scientists discovered an underwater world in the Antarctic filled with hundreds of amphipods, crustacean animals similar to shrimp. Wait a minute. It happened in the Antarctic? But the McMurdo Dry Valleys are located in Antarctica. Well, the words are very similar, but what is the difference? Oh, and don't forget the Arctic. 
The Antarctic is the region in the southernmost part of Earth that houses the continent of Antarctica. And the Arctic is another land altogether. They have the same natural conditions – frost, ice, and snow – but they're located in different parts of the planet. The Arctic is at the North Pole. Antarctica is at the South Pole. Now back to the discovery. Scientists put forward theories that the ice of the Antarctic hides a vast network of freshwater rivers and lakes. And in 2022, they found a new ecosystem. Researchers explored the Antarctic Ross Ice Shelf and its underwater rivers. This is a massive piece of ice floating in the ocean. A team from New Zealand used a special drilling rig equipped with a hot water supply to drill a hole 1,640 feet deep. That's more than the height of the Empire State Building. Then, they lowered some video cameras and saw thousands of crustaceans swimming in different directions. So it seems they're very unorganized. In the waters of the Antarctic, you can also meet some of the scariest creatures on the planet. These are sea spiders. They got this name because they resemble land spiders. But they're actually a species of marine arthropods. And unlike land spiders, those in the ocean are much larger. They look like eight strong legs without a body. One such spider can be a dinner plate in width. Some of them have no eyes and have proboscises instead of jaws. Sea spiders are poorly studied because they live in deep, cold waters. Antarctica hides many little-known animals. There are long tunnels in its glaciers leading to scary darkness. On this cold continent, people have found the remains of giant dinosaurs and other ancient creatures, such as the ancestors of modern ducks. Many underground rivers and lakes hide unexplored wildlife. Even the ice here can be weird. Take a look at these striped icebergs. They have blue, black, green, and turquoise shapes. The color depends on the conditions of the water during freezing. For example, green lines appear because of algae, blue ones form when the water freezes too quickly. Okay, I'm freezing. Time to go thaw somewhere warmer. Hawaii. Yeah. You know, scientists make discoveries that change the world, but even they can face mysteries. Here are 10 things that have baffled scientists. Imagine that you constantly hear a low-frequency hum, and no one can trace its source. Roughly 4% of the world's population hears the hum. It's a geography-free sound. I mean, people all around the world hear it. So the name varies from Taos hum to Auckland hum, depending on the region where it gets generated. The sound is just on the threshold of human hearing. People hear it less when they're outside, and it gets louder indoors, especially at night. What's even scarier is that you cannot unhear it once you've heard it. Some folks say it started in London around the time of Charles Dickens, who wrote A Christmas Carol, and the low-frequency sound actually comes from the humbug. <laughs> or not. Actually, the earliest cases were recorded in Bristol, UK, dating back to the mid-1970s. Scientists have various theories about where the hum comes from and why only some people can hear it. Yet they don't have a clear answer. It could occur when ocean waves move along the ocean floor. They shake the Earth when they collide with continental shelves. Or this might be happening because of volcanic eruptions and earthquakes. Oh, and how about ultra-low frequency radio signals used to communicate with submarines or even 5G? Hmm. Upsweep is another type of unidentified sound. It was discovered in 1991 in the Pacific Ocean. The sound is high enough to be recorded throughout the ocean. Scientists theorize that the sound could be related to underwater volcanic activity. Interestingly, the volume of the sound has been diminishing compared to its volume when it was first discovered. Yet it still can be detected. Plus, it's seasonal. It reaches its highest volume in spring and fall. Is it related to seasonal changes? No one really knows for sure. The next mysterious thing is a cone-shaped monument found in the Sea of Galilee in Israel. This monument was discovered accidentally by sonar scanning in 2003, but the findings were published only in 2013. The monument weighs 60,000 tons. It was once submerged by rising waters. Archaeologists say the monument is enigmatic because they can't figure out where it's from. They don't know what it's connected to or its function. So this big and unusual thing remains a mystery. 
Now let's move to Gobekli Tepe, Turkey. This place offers you one of the most archaeologically significant sites in the world. Why is it important? Well, it has massive carved stones about 11,000 years old. To put it in perspective, they're 6,000 years older than Stonehenge. Ancient people placed these stones before they began farming or crafting metal tools or pottery. So the existence of this place goes against the chronology of civilization we're familiar with, where people farmed first and built second. Apparently, it wasn't like that. In any case, a good question is, what was the purpose of this site? Was it built to worship some spirits? Yep, archaeologists believe it might be the world's oldest temple. Okay, say this with me. Paleodiction notosum. Yeah, I know, it sounds like a chemical formula. This is a living fossil found deep down on the ocean floor. A creature makes these hexagonal burrows, that for sure. Yet scientists can't identify the artist. Now, what do I mean by living fossil? Well, Paleodiction notosum is a creature believed to produce a burrow nearly identical to Paleodiction fossils. Is it a worm-like animal that made them? Scientists don't know. One thing is clear, this isn't some random stuff created by geological forces. Now speaking of fossils, take a look at this giant one. Its informal name is Godzillius. It was discovered in 2011 by an amateur paleontologist. This is a scientist who studies the history of life on Earth by analyzing fossil records. Anyway, back to Godzillius. It's almost 7 feet in length and 9 feet tall if you were to measure it upright. This fossil is 450 million years old, coming from the time when Cincinnati was underwater. It might be a fossilized algae mat, but some scientists have different opinions. This is a massive tunnel found in South America. The tunnel is at least 8,000 to 10,000 years old. At first, researchers discovered a couple of colossal burrows. They were enormous and neatly constructed. Geologists were amazed, saying they had never seen such structures before. There's no known geologic process to explain their formation. I mean, researchers have known about the burrows since the 1930s, but back then, they believed that these tunnels were just some sort of archaeological construction until they discovered huge claw marks on the walls and ceiling. They reasoned that some extinct species could be the ones to have left these marks. Many geologists strongly believe they found the burrows of giant ground sloths and armadillos. The structure is the largest known burrow from the Paleolithic age in the Amazon. Yet experts have many questions. How come such a deliberate-looking structure could form naturally? A researcher then discovered another strange cave. This one was hundreds of miles away from the massive tunnel. Fast forward, there are now more than 1,500 burrows from the Paleolithic Age found in Brazil. What's even more interesting is that some of these caves are connected to tunnels that sometimes lead to chambers. I'll continue with a natural phenomenon. What if I told you that every year, especially in October, fireballs appear on the Mekong River in Thailand? According to legends, Naga fireballs are a call for Buddha to return to Earth. And river serpents are the ones making these calls. Well, that's a myth. But what does science say about it? Is it related to a flammable gas? There are no clear answers yet. These fireballs appear to rise from the water. They can go as high as almost 990 feet. They're like fireworks, disappearing rapidly. They typically glow with a reddish or orange color. I'll mention some legends too, because why not? They're thrilling. And it would be a shame not to include the one about the lost city of Atlantis. As you may know, the legend says that Atlantis submerged into the ocean around 11,000 years ago. Since then, not just scientists, but also treasure hunters and philosophers have been searching for the lost world. Could Bimini Road be a trace? In 1968, a diver found strange stones off the coast of North Bimini Island in the Bahamas. The stones look human-made. It's like they were evenly spaced out and laid in an orderly row. It baffled scientists, but not for long. Carbon dating analysis of the blocks revealed that geological forces created the road naturally. There weren't any tool marks or signs indicating that the blocks had been stacked or something. The research is continuing, but yeah, scientists generally believe that the rocks were created by erosion. 
Well, I guess the time of Atlantis hasn't come yet. Okay, picture this. You're wandering on the beach, and you see dozens of octopuses walking past. In 2017, a group of people from Wales witnessed exactly this. Why did these creatures come out of the ocean? No one knows the answer. The group reported that they had seen 20 to 30 octopi crawling on the sand. The people looked for some signs of injury, but found nothing. They said that they had carried the animals back to the ocean. Interestingly, these creatures kept crawling onto the shore when people were asleep. Experts say that it's hard to be sure of the reason that pushed the animals to the beach without conducting a physical examination. They're still speculating about the reason behind this unusual and rare occurrence. Could it be overcrowding? Furthermore, the octopi were (laughs) well-armed. A separate study points out that the more fishers hunt large animals that feed on octopuses, the more the octopus population grows. Maybe that's why these creatures have to go farther to find food or shelter. But without proper research, these are only theories. There's a lot we don't know about space, too. So here's a bonus fact about the yellowish source of life in the solar system. Scientists have discovered a new type of wave inside the sun. These waves move in the opposite direction to the sun's rotation. Plus, they move super fast. So fast that it's beyond our understanding. Researchers have different theories about the function of the waves. If they figure out their role, this could give them additional insight into the processes happening inside the sun. And yes, the octopi were (laughs) well-armed. In 1991, somewhere in the lush jungles of central Vietnam, A local logger found a mysterious hole among the foliage and bushes. He looked in there and felt a strong wind blowing into his face. Then he heard a strange sound from the cave depths and realized that it was the sound of a river. The logger didn't check the cave, but decided to go back there with a flashlight and a rope. When he returned, he couldn't find the cave anywhere. He spent a few years searching for it. Finally, In the 2000s, the logger managed to locate it again. In 2009, he brought scientists to this place. They found out the cave, called Sundong, is the largest in the world. There's so much space here that you'll hear a long echo if you shout. Sundong's main passage reaches 660 feet in height in some places, which is more than half as tall as the Empire State Building. The area of the cave is so huge that an entire New York City block with 40-story skyscrapers would fit in there. There's a deep underground labyrinth under the jungles of Vietnam, hiding three of the largest caves in the world. And Sundong is number one on this list. The vast space inside is filled with various plants, unique microclimates, and different landscapes. There's a real jungle growing underground. It became possible thanks to the collapsed ceiling in some places. It lets sunlight penetrate there from above. There are huge stalactites 250 feet high on the ceilings and walls, which is more than the length of a passenger Boeing. They've been here between hundreds of thousands and millions of years. Some limestone deposits are more than 450 million years old. It means they've existed since the time long before the dinosaurs. Besides the jungle, there are also many rivers in the cave. They were formed because of rainwater coming down from holes in the ceiling. These rivers are smooth and fast, like slides in a water park. But riding them isn't the best idea, since they can carry you into one of those long labyrinths that the cave is full of. And we still don't know where they're going. You may find yourself in another unknown part of the cave. This is what happened in 2018. Three divers accidentally discovered new areas in Sundong. The cave turned out to be much bigger than everyone thought. They dove into one of the cave's lakes and reached a depth of 256 feet. At the bottom, they found a separate tunnel. Divers lowered a fishing line with a lead weight there and found out that this place reaches a depth of 394 feet. And the tunnel is more than half a mile long. We still don't know the exact size of the tunnel. Sundong also connects to another huge cave. There are lots of things you can see in Sundong besides underground labyrinths and rivers. You can find spacious rooms with lakes, and you can walk for hours along dark mountain corridors. This place is strikingly beautiful, but dangerous at the same time. And the coolest thing is that you can take a walk here. 
Since 2013, Sendong Cave has been open to tourists. It's not just an easy walk to take some selfies, though. The expedition to the cave lasts for several days. For the first day and a half, you'll explore the third largest cave in the world. And only after that, you'll reach Sundong. The path will take you through rivers, dense jungles, mountains, and rocks. You can meet many exotic birds, monkeys, and other animals. And according to many people, the way to the cave is even more impressive than the cave itself. When you reach your destination, you'll spend the next few days exploring Sundong. Together with other tourists, professional guides, and porters, you'll be sleeping in tents in different places in the cave every day. You'll see some stunning landscapes and, get ready for this, 400 million year old majestic fossils. There are also dark rooms with lakes that are good for swimming. Such adventurous expeditions become more popular every year. People who visited the cave call it the most amazing place they've ever seen. Another amazing cave is located in Indonesia, on the island of Flores. It's quite small, but holds amazing things inside. In 2003, a group of scientists discovered ancient artifacts here, including fossils of primitive tools, such as sharpened stones. Scientists realized that hundreds of thousands of years ago, this place was home to our distant ancestors. Then they found a very unusual female skeleton. That woman was only three and a half feet tall. This is the height of the waistline of an average adult person. That woman had no problems with her spine or with the development of her bones, though. This and other skeletons found in the cave belong to some unknown human ancestors. Scientists called this species Homo floresiensis, or simply, Hobbit. The woman's weight was about 35 to 79 pounds. Analysis of the skull and bones showed she was about 30 years old. Hobbits probably lived on Earth between 190,000 and 50,000 years ago. There's a chance they met the ancestors of modern humans. The next cave is in Turkey. Imagine that you live in an old house and decide to make some repairs. You throw all the old stuff out of the rooms. The last place to sort out is your basement. You've hardly ever visited it and have no idea what's hidden there. But it's pretty spacious, so you decide to turn it into a room. You tear down the wall and discover the entrance to the cave. This is a tunnel that leads underground. You walk through the cave and see a real underground city. This happened in Turkey in 1963. One of the locals discovered a secret passage to a lost city in his basement. About 20,000 people could live there. There was enough space for livestock and food supplies. It's not just a maze of tunnels. There's a chapel, a school, stables, kitchens, walls, and other signs of civilization. The city was built in the Byzantine era, in the years 780 through 1180. It's not the only one down there and is connected to many underground tunnels and towns that stretch for several miles. Let's finish our journey in the strangest and most frightening cave. We're going to the southeast of Romania, near the Black Sea. Here, on a desolate wide plain, you can find a hole. This is a tunnel leading deep underground. The air inside the cave has high levels of hydrogen sulfide and carbon dioxide. Under normal conditions, the air we breathe contains around 20% oxygen, but it's only 10% here. You won't be able to breathe freely without an oxygen tank. The water and air here are poisoned. Almost no animals are able to live in such conditions, at least the ones we know about. And this cave is filled with 48 species of living organisms, 33 of which are new unknown species. Creeping things that live here can scare you, especially if you're afraid of bugs. Strange white snails and white spiders are crawling along the walls. An unknown species of leeches and transparent shrimp are swimming in the water. White millipedes with huge mustaches are creeping on the ground. Here you can also meet an unknown kind of scorpion with a transparent white body that doesn't look like any other kind of scorpion. Nothing here looks like ordinary animals at all. All creatures in the cave are white or transparent. They don't have eyes, but they have long paws and antennae whiskers that help to navigate in space. Plants can't live here without sunlight and clean air. This means that oxygen isn't produced in this place. So how do these creatures manage to survive? The answer is in the water. 
The surface of the lake and puddles here is covered with strangely moving foam. This substance is a living organism. It consists of a billion bacteria called autotrophs. Ordinary plants absorb carbon dioxide and use photosynthesis to produce oxygen. This cave is filled with carbon dioxide. Autotrophs absorb it and secrete tiny food particles. Bacteria feed on these particles. Larger organisms then feed on those bacteria, and so on. In the end, there's enough food for everyone. This process is called chemosynthesis. It's like photosynthesis, but uses water instead of sunlight in its chemical reactions. In this cave, evolution has created a completely unique biological system separate from the rest of the world. 47-year-old Kenny Veach told his family he was going hiking for two days. His destination? The Mojave Desert. The man wanted to revisit a cave he had discovered during one of his previous hikes. But that was the last time anyone had seen Kenny Veach. A helicopter and over 30 search and rescue teams came back empty. The hiker was nowhere to be found. Was the mysterious M cave behind his disappearance? The oddest thing about Kenny's case is the fact that he was a seasoned hiker. He often went on solo trips to explore deserts in California and Nevada. The man was an ultralight hiker. That meant he brought only the most basic of supplies, water, food, and a tent. That's all. But this was enough for several days of camping in the desert. Kenny would rarely bring a GPS device with him. He didn't even bother to pack a compass or a map. Some would call him reckless, but he managed to get back home every single time. Kenny wasn't shy either. He had a YouTube channel where he regularly posted his adventures. He named his channel Snakebit McGee because he picked up snakes wherever he went. But Kenny also had another habit. He went into every cave he found in the desert. Now, he didn't post many videos. Kenny mostly used YouTube to comment on other people's adventures. In a comment from June 2014, the man revealed that he had discovered a mysterious M-shaped cave. It was located in the Sheep Mountains of North Las Vegas. Kenny's description of the cave is where the weird part of the story begins. He spotted it while hiking and noticed the cave had an interesting entrance. It was shaped like a perfect letter M. Kenny went up to it, but something didn't seem right. He reported that his body started to shake as he approached the cave. The vibrations were so strong near the entrance that Kenny turned back. In his own words, he was scared for his life. It must have really been something if it frightened an experienced trekker. Kenny had an impressive track record. He had been hiking for 20 years. He explored caves other people were too afraid to even enter. Once, he was bitten by a rattlesnake and had to spend a week in the hospital. On his journeys, the man found skulls of all shapes and sizes, as well as old animal traps. Kenny slept on mountain peaks under the stars. One time, he hurt his leg on a mountaintop. He had to walk 20 miles back to his truck. It was 100 degrees Fahrenheit that day, and Kenny had one cup of water to keep him going. Kenny Veach was a true survivalist. But this one cave was a mystery to him. He admitted that he was totally unprepared that day. He had the tools to open a can, but not to fight the mysterious force that took over his body. But Kenny wasn't a quitter. He made plans to return to the M cave, and this time, he was going to be ready. He did so several months later, but much better equipped. But the trip turned out to be a bust. He recorded a video, but couldn't find the cave. Was that it? Was the brave explorer finally going to quit? Not by a long shot. His followers on social media wanted him to solve the mystery. So he went out into the desert for the third time. He planned a short overnight trip, but nobody ever saw him again. After two days, his family alerted the authorities. They quickly launched a search for the missing man. Now we come to the weird part. In one of his videos, Kenny stood in front of an abandoned mine shaft. This is where he briefed the viewers on the mission. Rescue teams reached this point and found Kenny's phone. This was 10 days into the search, but the trail soon went cold. The rescuers feared the worst. They decided to send a camera down the shaft, but didn't find anything. For a full month, no one had any idea where Kenny was. And then the mystery deepened. 
an unknown woman came forward online. She claimed to be the missing man's girlfriend. The mysterious woman told the story of how she went with Kenny on hour-long hikes. She urged hikers to use GPS not to get lost. And then, a claim that shocked social media users. The woman believed Kenny's disappearance wasn't an accident. She revealed that her alleged boyfriend had some serious issues. Apparently, he had quit his job a year prior to his disappearance. Did Kenny Veach really trek into the desert to take his own life? People weren't convinced. Kenny's daughter believed her father just had an accident. In her words, he was a survivor. Was the mysterious M Cave responsible for his disappearance? Did he find someone or something he shouldn't have found there? The questions linger, and so did the theories among the online community. Fellow hikers and YouTubers were determined to find the M Cave. This would solve Kenny Veach's mysterious disappearance once and for all. In 2021, one hiker got lucky. He claimed to have found the secret of M Cave. For safety reasons, the man couldn't reveal his exact location. The cave sits somewhere near Nevada State Route 375 East. The entrance to the cave really looks like an oversized letter M, just like Veach described it. But the shape is too hard to notice from ground level. Only when you look at it from above is the M shape visible. Who knows, hikers might have been walking past it for years without noticing the cave. Even Kenny couldn't locate the entrance the second time he went looking for it. The cave wasn't very deep, but there was something odd at the entrance. There appears to have been a straight line of rocks. Did someone try to wall off the entrance? And at the back of the cave, there was an even stranger find. Small pieces of wood were scattered along the floor. They looked a lot like 2x4s that are used in construction. Was there a door here once? The hiker found a nail sticking out of the stone. It could be part of a latch that was there some time ago. But the strangest part was the writing on the wall. Hatch or Veach? It's hard to tell. The hiker that discovered the cave didn't want to stay to find out. He left the cave in a hurry. No, it wasn't because he felt a strange vibration in his body like Kenny. He just didn't want to be in a desert cave in the middle of nowhere. This is the Mojave Desert, one of the most dangerous landscapes on Earth. Could this setting better explain how Kenny Veach disappeared without a trace in 2014? The desert's nickname is well-deserved. This is where scientists recorded the hottest temperature on the planet. 134 degrees Fahrenheit and the average temperature during summer, just 113 degrees Fahrenheit, no sweat. But you'll also need a blanket. At night, the air temperatures drop well below freezing. Talk about a climate roller coaster. And the list of dangers doesn't end there. The driest and hottest place in the United States is home to dangerous animals. Mountain lions, venomous lizards, spiders, and wasps. You name it. Any one of these animals can end the life of an unsuspecting hiker. There is a reason why Kenny always wore snake guards when trekking. And then there are mine shafts. Local authorities strongly advise hikers not to enter them. These old mines from the 1800s are highly unstable. A person can easily fall down a hidden shaft. They also have pockets of bad air, which can suffocate a person. And remember the likable wildlife? They too live in these shafts. Rattlesnakes, scorpions, and black widow spiders. Kenny Veach could have easily fallen into one of these shafts, and there would be no help for him from miles around since Nevada is one of the least populated states. Researchers have found almost 1,000 previously hidden Maya settlements in the tropical lowlands of what is now northern Guatemala. They did it with LIDAR, light detection and ranging lasers, which they used to scan areas from the air. The region we're talking about is pretty vast. All those structures and buildings they saw over there stretch across about 650 square miles. And these spots were supposedly occupied thousands of years ago. It seems all these structures were pretty densely packed, so people lived close to each other. They had at least 417 ancient villages, towns, and cities where they could identify boundaries. These structures and buildings were actually a part of a state that looked like a kingdom. 
Some of these settlements were built as sports courts, civic, ceremonial and religious centers, and residential homes. There were also massive palaces, platforms, dams, pyramids, and causeways across that area. People who lived there also had reservoirs where they collected water. So, they needed the power to organize thousands of specialists and workers. And they also needed many skilled people to build such structures without the technologies we have today. They needed lime producers, architects, mortar and quarry specialists, lithic technicians, those who took care of legal enforcement, and other important roles to establish the true community. This cool laser scanning system researchers used while exploring this area can even penetrate very dense ecosystems and vegetation. The light bounces off different surfaces and then creates a digitally reconstructed map. This map is based on how much time it takes for the pulses to get back to a receiver. So, with this laser system, they discovered they were also lowlands for agriculture. So why exactly did the Maya settle in this region? It was a specific area. Plus, it was hard to build such an amazing kingdom in a tropical rainforest climate. Back in the old times, ancient peoples had mostly inhabited areas in drier climates. Over there, they would build water resources, which were some sort of the basis of society and a source of life. An example of this is Teotihuacan of Highland, Mexico, although they did have a couple of navigable rivers they could use for transport and trade. But these rainforest areas had their advantages too. The Maya used natural resources like limestone, which was their primary building material, salt, and the volcanic rock obsidian, which they used for different tools. Also, they managed to find enough dry land to live and build homes there. The lowlands were seasonal swamps called bajos, and they were perfect for agriculture because of the fertile soil. Generally, the Maya built settlements that could endure rainy periods too. They were ready for different circumstances, including flood and drought, which is something you could see in how they built houses. Their architecture was also one piece of evidence that showed their community was like a centralized kingdom-like state, which shows they stuck together through tough times. The Mayan Empire was very powerful, and it reached its peak about the 6th century CE. They were excellent at pottery, agriculture, writing, mathematics, and calendars. They were the ones who created complex calendar systems, such as the Calendar Round, which is based on 365 days. Although some believe the Mayan calendar predicted December 21st, 2012 would be the end of the world, it was just a coincidence with the end of a certain full cycle. They would call it the Long Count Calendar, and it lasts 5,125 years. The Mayan people left behind an impressive amount of astonishing architecture and symbolic artwork. Most of their stone cities ended up abandoned by 900 CE. No one still knows why the Mayan civilization in that area collapsed, although there are some theories. Some think that by the 9th century, these people had exhausted the resources around them to the point that they could no longer feed and sustain such a big population. Others believe some city-states didn't get along that well, so they broke down the traditional system of power they used to have. Some say it was all because of a very long period of drought. It could be a combination of all these factors, though. But one Mayan city, located on an island, even survived until the 17th century. It was long after the rest of the Mayan civilizations had been destroyed or abandoned. If you're a traveler, you might know the town by its modern name, Flores. Scientists believe about 2,000 people lived there. The earliest Maya people were farmers. They cultivated crops like beans, squash, corn, and cassava. As they had many interesting ingredients, they created hundreds of cool recipes. Many of those are still present even today. For example, in modern Mexican cooking, and especially popular are papayas, cacao, avocados, squash, pineapples, chili peppers, beans, and so on. Even though the Maya mostly practiced a kind of primitive type of slash and burn agriculture, there is also evidence of them using some more advanced farming methods, like terracing and irrigation. And they were big chocolate lovers. More than 3,500 years ago, 
the Olmecs of Mesoamerica probably turned out to be the first to realize that it takes some work for us to get such a cool thing as chocolate. But the Maya were the ones who turned it into a true form of art. Scientists found out about it when they found cacao in Mayan pottery. Their chocolate would be mixed with honey, water, cornmeal, and chili peppers. That's how you get a spicy, savory, hot chocolate beverage you can try even today in Mexico and Central America. Also, they used written language in their books. Their paper was made from fig tree bark, and using strips of that paper, they created a large library of books. Books made of this material are called codices, and four of these can still be found today. Sadly, many books were lost over time because of the humid climate or some human factors. The classic Maya built a bunch of palaces and temples that had a stepped pyramid shape. They decorated them with inscriptions and reliefs which have earned them the reputation of being incredible artists of Mesoamerica. For the Mayans, flat foreheads were the most desirable thing on someone's face. They were generally really into aesthetics, and having a flat forehead was one of the main things where you could meet their highest aesthetic standard. They also liked to glam up their looks with makeup and clothing. Also, the Mayans were master tattoo artists. Actually, they were one of the first civilizations that started doing such forms of body art. They had a rich culture and believed in many things, such as fairies. Many civilizations across the globe believed in these mythical creatures, which had different names everywhere. The Mayans called those creatures aluxes. They would make sculptures of aluxes from wood or clay, take them to the forest, and hide in some secret spots. The Maya believed these sculptures would come to life during the night and take the role of guardians of their land, animals, and crops. The Maya believed caves were entrances that led to the underworld. You can even visit some of these caves if you like. For example, you can explore the jungles of Quintana Roo and Yucatan near Cancun. There are many spots where researchers found artifacts the Mayans had left behind. They were one of the first cultures that learned how to use rubber latex and make, for example, rubber balls for the many interesting games they had. They used natural latex and then probably mixed it with some other natural substances. That's how they came up with the bouncy balls they played with. They also built cool steam baths. The Maya had structures made from stone that looked like something we know today as bathtubs. Plus, they were building heated stone structures we know as sweat houses. Researchers found these in El Salvador and Guatemala, and they were previously hidden under volcanic ash. The moon's surface has millions of craters, but something else has drawn a lot of attention to it. A giant rare hole that turned out to be a tube. It was found when the Japanese lunar orbiter was gathering data around the moon's skylight, the tube's entrance. Researchers found a specific echo pattern that suggested there was a hollow area. They discovered more echo patterns at a couple of places near the hole, so there could be more lunar tubes there. But in this big tube, you could place an entire football field and the pit could swallow it whole. It's irregularly shaped and 427 feet in diameter. Scientists think that there could be secret caves, a tunnel system, or an entire geological wonderland under the surface. It could be a good shelter for astronauts that land on the moon, or even be a harbor for a lunar colony. No one ever managed to stay on the moon for more than three days because of the conditions on the satellite. It has a wide range of temperatures, low atmosphere, and no magnetic field that would protect life on the surface from things like radiation or harsh sun rays. Astronauts wear spacesuits, but they can't protect them over long periods of time. But a lava tube could. When a lava flow cools, it gets a hard crust, which later thickens and creates a roof over that same lava. It continues to flow, but when it stops, the channel can drain, which results in an empty tube. Our planet also has lava tubes, but they're not as big as the one found on the moon. There's a special type of tree called a moon tree. It's grown from seeds that were taken into space during one of the missions and then returned back to Earth. You can find this kind of tree growing across the U.S. Earth is 27% bigger than the moon, 
and far more massive. Our gravity is stronger. If you drop a rock on the Earth, it will fall faster. 150 pounds on Earth is just 25 pounds on the Moon. The Earth has numerous satellites circling around it, but the Moon is the only natural one. Our Moon was formed during a big collision of the Earth and one more planet the size of Mars. This happened around 4.6 billion years ago, shortly after the Sun and our solar system were formed. After the collision, a cloud of vaporized rock went into orbit around our planet, cooled, and shaped into a ring of small solid bodies. They later got together and became the Moon, leaving craters as a reminder of this collision. If you're standing on the surface of the Moon, your shadow will be darker than on Earth. This is because there's no atmosphere to scatter light and create lighter shadows. One of Jupiter's moons, Io, has hundreds of volcanoes and pretty wild eruptions, sometimes sending plumes 250 miles into the atmosphere. These eruptions happen because of the extremely strong gravity this moon is exposed to. Its insides tense up and relax in those periods when it gets closer to and then further from Jupiter, which generates enough energy for insane volcanic activity. It's not just planets, even quite small space bodies sometimes have moons. In 1993, researchers discovered a 20-mile-wide asteroid and its one-mile-wide moon. You'd need 400,000 moons to match the brightness of our central star, the Sun. The moon reflects the light it gets from the Sun, but it doesn't produce its own. That brightness depends on the angle between the moon, the Earth, and the Sun. Our moon is around 32 Earths away from us, and 29 Earths at its closest. When the night is dark and clear, it seems like you can touch a full moon. But if you wanted to do it, you'd have to travel up to 250,000 miles. Still, there is water on the moon. Not puddles or lakes, but grains of water ice exist in permanently shadowed parts near the moon's poles. Scientists think that water got on the moon a long time ago during a period when both the Moon and Earth were constantly struck by asteroids and comets, which contained water ice. This process may have even helped us get our own lakes and oceans, not just the Moon's icy water. Newer research says that the Moon's interior already had water, and it went to the surface during volcanic activity. The same might have happened on our planet, too. Out of 200 moons in our solar system, our Moon is the fifth biggest one. Jupiter's moon Ganymede is the biggest one, almost 1.5 times bigger than ours. Apollo 11 was the mission where humankind first landed on the moon. It was a very important moment, broadcast all over the world. But it was almost interrupted by a huge windstorm that was going on in Australia back then. Parker Dish was placed there, which was something we used to get the broadcast signals from the moon. The moon is not a perfect circle. It's more in the shape of an egg, with the thicker end pointing toward us. This shape is derived from its rotation. A full moon can keep you awake. Studies showed that people experienced less deep sleep, and it took them longer to fall asleep during the full moon period. It wasn't about its brightness, but the lunar cycle that influences our internal body clock. Each year, the moon is moving away from Earth because of the interaction between the moon's gravitational force and our oceans. In one year, it moves around 1.5 inches away, which means that in around 600 million years, it will be 14,600 miles further from Earth than it is now. This number isn't accidental. That's the time when total solar eclipses will stop happening. Humankind hasn't set foot on the moon in a few decades, but footprints there are still fresh because there are no winds up there, so these tracks can stay there for millions of years. The Moon has its own time zone, called Lunar Standard Time. Time is different on the Moon, so a year there is divided into 12 days, considering each is as long as our month. Days got named after astronauts who walked on the Moon. The Moon calendar starts the moment Neil Armstrong stepped onto the Moon in 1969. There are possible energy sources for living beings on one of Saturn's moons. It has an ocean under the surface, and it may feature some chemical reactions similar to those that help certain forms of life on our planet survive. The moon used to have active volcanoes, probably during the time of the dinosaurs. Molten lava hardened on its surface billions of years ago, which helped create unique lunar craters. But the volcanoes have been dormant for a long time now. The moon has earthquakes, or rather, moonquakes. 
Just like our planet, the moon also has a crust that goes through changes and shifts. Shaking occurs when its crust warms and expands, or it can even be caused by meteorite impacts. Moonquakes are not as strong as earthquakes, but can last way longer since the moon doesn't have enough water to prevent seismic vibrations. The moon has a big range of temperatures because it doesn't have an atmosphere. During the day, it can go up to 200 degrees Fahrenheit, but at its poles, the temperature is around negative 400 degrees Fahrenheit. In 2019, astronauts discovered a strange space phenomenon. The moon was crossing in front of the sun, and at one moment, it seemed like it stopped and then started moving backward. It's the same optical illusion like when you're driving on the highway and pass a car that's slower than you. At one moment, as you move ahead, it may appear like it's going backward. The crust of the moon is not equally thick in all its parts. Some are up to 37 miles thick, while others are much thinner. The moon itself doesn't change colors. When sunlight goes through our atmosphere, it reflects off the moon and makes us see it as pink or red. Sometimes there are particles of dust sent into the atmosphere, and in combination with sunlight, they give the moon an orange glow. The moon doesn't have a dark side. There's only a far side that we can't see from the Earth. The moon spins on its axis once and makes a circle around the Earth all in the same amount of time, which is why we only see its one face the entire time. All planets in our solar system have at least one moon, except for Mercury and Venus. Mercury has less mass than our planet, so its gravity is lower than ours, around 38% of the Earth's gravity. That means 100 pounds on Earth would be 38 pounds on Mercury. Because of the weaker gravity, and since it's so close to the Sun, Mercury wouldn't be able to have its own moon. It would probably crash into Mercury, or even go into orbit around the Sun, and someday even get pulled into it. Venus most likely doesn't have its moon because it's also too close to the Sun. Here's a riddle. Which U.S. city is so loved that its name should be repeated twice? You guessed it, New York, New York. But the thing is, how much of New York do we really know? I'm talking about the city that lies under the city. Dare to join me on an underground tour of the Big Apple? Then grab a flashlight, it's about to get dark. We'll start in the heart of Manhattan, in the front of the Romanesque City Hall building. Believe it or not, beneath our feet lies New York's oldest subway station, known as the Old City Hall Station. It opened in 1904 on October 27th, a night of true celebration for New Yorkers. People were so excited, some of them spent the entire night riding the trains back and forth. Before this, urban dwellers moved around in carriages pulled by horses. No wonder the subway was such a hit. You might feel like a time traveler stepping inside the old city hall station. The architecture is dazzling and one of a kind. They sure don't make subway stations like this one anymore. Fun fact, the old city hall station would cost $6.2 million if it was built today. Back in the day, it had dozens of brass chandeliers hanging around. It was one of the few spots in town with functioning electricity. And oh, not to mention brand new multicolored tiled arches and stained glass ceilings you can still see today. Impressive, huh? If you decide to wander down the tracks, you might be in for a treat. Underground New York is as fascinating as the city above the ground. But one thing we usually take for granted is the behind the scenes of what the Big Apple needs to function. Down here, you might see one or two of New York's pneumatic mail tubes. These tubes were built back in the 1800s and they were operational up until the 1950s. They were responsible for distributing people's mail through different post offices. Letters flew at an impressive speed of 35 miles per hour. That's almost as fast as a professional runner. It sure sounds like a useful system. But I have to say, it feels weird imagining people's correspondence flying around 15 feet underground. Back to street level. We'll wander around fancy Lexington and Park Avenues. If you look up, you'll see the famous Waldorf Astoria Five Star Hotel. Many celebrities have stayed there, including John Lennon and Yoko Ono, as well as presidents such as FDR. This is why the hotel used a secret infrastructure to sneak people inside and out. Under the building, a tunnel known as Track 61 connected the Waldorf Astoria to Grand Central Station. The track was deactivated in the late 70s, 
But some people say Andy Warhol threw a party there in the 80s. I bet that was something. For the next part of our visit, we'll have to take the subway uptown. We'll get off at 125th Street and find ourselves on the scenic waterfront of Riverside Park. Here, you'll find abandoned tracks of an old metro line. If you follow the tracks, you'll get to an underground graffiti gallery, aka the Freedom Tunnel. The tunnel is named after a graffiti artist from the 80s, who is commonly known as Freedom. While exploring these tunnels, we'll see over 40 graffiti pieces he painted over 15 years. There are spray paints of James Dean, Mona Lisa, and even a self-portrait of Freedom himself. Moving on, let's wander around the northern part of NYC for a bit. Walking in Van Cortlandt Park will feel like hiking upstate, but believe me, you're still in the city. Along the way, you'll encounter some big ventilation towers made of stone. These towers were once part of an old New York infrastructure. They make up the remains of what used to be the Croton Aqueduct. In the 1800s, the city's water supply flowed through a 41-mile-long underground tunnel, all the way from Croton River in upstate New York to Bryant Park in midtown Manhattan. Oh yes, and I should probably tell you that Bryant Park wasn't a park. Instead, it hosted a colossal stone structure that looked pretty much like something ancient Egyptians would build. This four-acre structure served as the city's water reservoir. It even had a pathway on top so that people could enjoy a nice afternoon stroll while looking at the reservoir's crystalline water. Now, all this exploring might have made you hungry, but don't worry, our next stop includes a yummy treat. We'll have to leave Manhattan and make our way to Brooklyn. In case you didn't know, New York City is made of five boroughs, Manhattan, Queens, Bronx, Staten Island, and Brooklyn. Crown Heights, that's our stop. Would you believe me if I told you that beneath these streets lie caves full of aging cheese? How very Parisian of them. To get down there, you'll have to make your way through a century-old building that now works as an office space. Maybe wave hello to all those hard-working people and disappear in one of the stairways that will take you 30 feet below the ground. You won't need a flashlight for this one. The caves are bright and renovated and can hold up to 22,000 pounds of cheese. But hey, it might stink. That's the main reason cheesemakers decided to use underground tunnels to age cheese in the first place. After a bite or two of some delicious cheese, let's keep going. While still in Brooklyn, you might see tons of locals enjoying a sunny day in the McCarran Park pool. This pool is a huge attraction, being three times the size of an Olympic pool. As the NYC explorer you are becoming, you might even go for a swim. But hey, there's a much more interesting part to this attraction. The pool was built in the early 1900s, but it was shut down in the 50s. During this time, urban explorers discovered a network of underground tunnels right beneath the pool. And, of course, you can find a secret entrance and get a peek for yourself. There, you'll not only see the pool's filtration and heating system, but also a lot of graffiti from the time the site was abandoned. Neat! This question may sound weird, but have you ever seen a cow in New York? I sure haven't. Well, maybe there's a reason for that. Apparently, New York still has underground tunnels that were constructed for the transportation of cattle. Once New York started to flood with automobiles, cows became a burden for traffic. Until a 200-foot-long cow passage was built below 12th Street to transport the livestock that was ferried over from New Jersey. These days, you won't be able to visit this place in person because the tunnel was most likely destroyed. But historians found blueprints proving its existence. To add to the list, archaeologists discovered a very peculiar fossil a while back. Now, imagine peeling off the layers of the city's soil. First, at 15 inches, you'll find a layer of wires. I'm talking TV cables, electricity, and all that. Digging deeper, at 4 feet, you'll see water and sewage pipes. But then, at 15 feet down under the surface of NYC, diggers have found a fossilized shipwreck. The wreck is located right under Broad Street, where there was once shallow water. They believe the wreck dates back to the 1600s. It's 92 feet long and 25 feet wide. Oh, and that's not all. At the intersection of Bowery and Canal Street, engineers stumbled upon a room with its walls and ceiling covered in mirrors. 
and no one has managed to explain the existence of this bizarre place yet. Our Big Apple underground visit is coming to an end, but we sure did more than just scratch the surface on this one. Before we finish, let's enjoy the best of what NYC Cuisine has to offer, a good old bagel. Who knows, maybe next time we'll do Paris or even London. See you soon, Explorer. There are many myths around arguably the greatest structure ever built by humans, the Great Wall of China. Some say it's so grand that it's visible from space. Others claim that you can see it from as far as the moon. Other theories suggest that the builders of the wall were left inside. Well, sorry to disappoint you, but all these impressive stories are just myths. But even with those stories busted, the Great Wall of China is an impressive and truly breathtaking structure. So let me tell you its true story. Today, China is one of the most populated countries in the world, counting as many as 1.4 billion residents. It's also one of the oldest nations in the world. It has 3,500 years of continuous written history. But the civilization existed long before that. There is a theory that while the European continent, for example, was most likely reached by humans from Africa, China wasn't populated by settlers that came from somewhere else. Some people believe that the Chinese civilization got formed from local Stone Age people who lived on the territory since the prehistoric period. So now, the Great Wall of China. It's truly big even by today's standard, stretching for over 13,000 miles. To imagine it better, it's almost five times the distance between New York and Los Angeles. Or even a bit greater than the distance between the North and South Poles. Even in modern times, people have never built anything close to this big. Of course, it didn't take a day to build the Great Wall of China. Two, eh, keep going. In fact, the wall was being built for centuries. Maybe you know that ancient cities had walls around them to protect themselves from invaders. Yes, Chinese cities had them too. The first Chinese emperor united the country in 220 BCE and got a brilliant but very ambitious idea to turn all city walls into one big wall that would defend the country's border against attacks from the north. A trusted general directed the construction enrolling a big group of workers, soldiers, commoners, and convicts. Back then, the wall was built of rammed earth and wood. In some places that were strategically important, the sections of the wall overlap to provide maximum security. The walls were around 26 feet high on average. But the Great Wall didn't yet look like the construction we know today. Every next emperor would pick up the big wall project, strengthening and extending it, repairing, but also modernizing construction techniques. Some used bricks to build it. Others moved on to granite and marble blocks. Watchtowers and platforms weren't there from the beginning as well. They were added by Ming emperors. The watchtowers made it possible to communicate with other parts of the wall through smoke and fire messages. So the wall is quite inconsistent in terms of material but it only adds more charm to the construction and shows how much effort and time it took. The reasons why some parts of the wall have been standing for centuries and are still in good condition is glutinous rice flour. Turns out, this sticky rice mortar is almost like cement. It's very strong and waterproof, sealing the bricks so tightly together that even sneaky weeds can't grow between them. You may also notice that some bricks have writings carved on them. They were left by the workers who were building the wall. The purpose of those writings is quality assurance. They contain such information as location, quantity, and responsible officials. So, in the case of some problems with the quality of materials or constructions, it would be known who should be held accountable for it. Recently, a research group has looked through official historical documents of the Ming Dynasty that ruled China from the 14th to the 17th centuries they came across records of secret doors in the Great Wall. So they decided to find them. They used a flying robot to capture continuous centimeter resolution photos of the wall. They photographed 90% of the wall that was built during the Ming Dynasty 
and discovered the remains of over 220 secret doors along the wall. Some of them have a specific width and height that allows only one person to go through. Others are large enough to allow two horses to pass at the same time. Why are the doors there? Well, the Great Wall's main goal was to protect the country from the enemy. Building doors that could let the enemy in would undermine the whole point of having a wall. So, of course, the doors were secret passages. They perfectly matched the surroundings topographically. And the exit on the outside was camouflaged with bricks so that it was almost completely indistinguishable from the brick wall. The wall was never just a defensive wall, and it was never completely closed. It could be opened on demand. It was also a structure used for trade and commerce, communication between inside and outside the wall, and of course, for defense and spying. Some doors were used for trade with the other side. Through smaller doors, a person would sneak out to spy on the enemy that lived on the other side. The hidden gates were also useful for a sudden attack. As you remember, some gates were camouflaged with brick on the outside. The exit was so indistinguishable that the enemy had no idea exactly where it was located. The inside entrance for Chinese soldiers was hollow, so they could walk through the wall and break the camouflaged exit gate from the inside, starting their surprise attack. Now, even though the main point was to prevent outsiders from getting into the city, the wall wasn't too effective on that matter. It could still be climbed over or marched around. So the wall was being watched at all times, and the guards gave signals to the troops if they saw the enemy approach. Also, the wall provided more time to mobilize and bulk up the country's forces or lure the enemy troops into a difficult strategic position. The construction stopped at the end of the 19th century. The wall lost its strategic and military importance due to technological advances. Over the centuries to today, only 8% of the Great Wall is in good condition, and the rest is damaged. Also, around one-third of the wall has disappeared without a trace, due to both natural erosion and human damage. I guess you could say it's now just a pretty good wall. As you remember, the first parts of the wall were built out of rammed earth and wood. These are not the most unfailing materials if we're talking about thousands of years. Also, destructive farming methods have turned large areas into a desert and contributed to erosion. Also, many bricks were taken away from the wall in the last century to be used in building farms and houses. The wall is being deconstructed stone by stone even today, but this time by tourists. Quite a few of them take a stone as a souvenir. That's a total of a lot of stones, considering that over 10 million tourists visit the Great Wall every year. Since 1987, the wall has been a UNESCO World Heritage Site highlighting that it has an outstanding importance to humanity. The wall is one of China's 56 World Heritage Sites, second place among countries with landmarks protected by UNESCO. Who's first, you ask? Well, the top spot, with 58 World Heritage Sites, belongs to Italy. And do you know that the wall isn't only a famous tourist attraction, but also the location of the Great Wall Marathon? It's a marathon that was established in 1999 and is one of the most challenging ones in the world. You guessed right, people run along the wall, including all the steps. There are three distances, so that participants can run a full marathon that is 26 miles, a half marathon that's 13 miles, or just have a fun run of 5 miles. One of the most unexplored and mysterious places on Earth is located in plain sight. It's one of the most majestic monuments of humankind. The wonder of the ancient world hides a secret that scientists and archaeologists still can't solve. This is the Great Sphinx of Giza in Egypt. The huge sculpture of a lion with a human head was carved out of rock about four and a half thousand years ago. Scientists still don't know the exact date of its creation and are also unaware of who built it and what for. There are many assumptions and theories, but none of them has been confirmed. Most people have seen this majestic sculpture either in photographs or in reality. 
but almost no one knows what's hidden underneath it. The statue of the Sphinx was carved from a single piece of limestone. It was painted. The remains of color pigment on the surface prove this. In the distant past, the Sphinx looked much brighter and more colorful than what we see now. But even after thousands of years, its greatness hasn't diminished. And by the way, Sphinx is not the real name. It was invented by the Greeks about a hundred years or more after its creation. Initially, the Egyptians called the statue hor em -Akit. There are many legends and theories saying the Sphinx is there for a reason. It's like a watchdog that guards the tomb of the pharaoh and the secrets of ancient Egypt. These legends become more plausible when archaeologists discovered hidden entrances at the feet of the Sphinx. They believe that these secret passages are the beginning of the tunnels leading to the halls with treasures. You can find a lot of stories on the internet that claim the Sphinx hides the Hall of Records, a repository filled with ancient and secret knowledge. One of the main artifacts of this repository is supposed to be the records of the ancient mythical state of Atlantis. According to legends, the entire library from this city was moved under the Sphinx. The entrance to this library must be located next to the Sphinx's right paw. Many archaeologists tried to find this entrance, but came away empty-handed. Also, there are many images with detailed diagrams of the underground city that consists of a network of tunnels and chambers under the Sphinx. Someone says there are structures as tall as 12-story buildings hiding underground, but there's no evidence of this. Archaeologists, even after millennia, continue to explore the mysterious sculpture. At the same time, many Egyptians don't want to learn more about the Sphinx. They're terrified of awakening something supernatural. In 1998, scientists discovered tunnels leading to empty caves under the Sphinx. They found evidence of earlier excavations there. It's quite possible that someone managed to find the treasures and take them away. Some people believe Egyptians found some kind of artifact under the Sphinx that has the power of unknown advanced technologies. The artifact is so powerful that it can change the course of history. Of course, most theories are just fairy tales of conspiracy fans, but it's a confirmed fact that the Sphinx hides a system of caves and rooms. There are so many rumors surrounding the Sphinx that it's impossible to understand what's true and what's false. In any case, it's difficult and dangerous to study the sculpture because active excavations can destroy it. And then the entrance to the underground rooms can get blocked by rocks and lost forever. Also, further exploration requires a lot of money, and financing is not always easy to find. But the main reason? It's too risky. There's no guarantee that people will be able to get out of the underground labyrinths. For these reasons, scientists and archaeologists have been exploring this majestic structure for so long. Another famous architectural monument with a secret is Mount Rushmore in South Dakota. Everyone admires the images of the U.S. president's faces carved into the rock, but few people know that there's a secret room hidden behind the head of Abraham Lincoln. The architect of Mount Rushmore wanted to carve slabs on the rock with the record of the main stages of the country's history. But his plan was too complicated to carry out. Then he was offered to implement it on a much smaller scale, to build a secret room inside the mountain. The idea was to save this knowledge so that future generations will always remember the history of their country. Unfortunately, the architect didn't have time to finish his work. The construction stopped for several decades. But in the late 90s, the project was resumed. Porcelain enamel panels depicting the history of the U.S. were placed in the room. It's possible that these plates will be stored there forever. But people can't see them, at least for now. The room is inaccessible to tourists as it's too difficult to get inside. Another secret room is located in the Empire State Building. More precisely, it's not even a room, but a place where you can take cool photos. 
almost all tourists gather on the observation deck of the 86th floor to enjoy a stunning view of Manhattan. But there's another deck with panoramic windows on the 102nd floor. There are way fewer people there because almost no one knows about that place. Fortunately, access to this deck is open to everyone. You probably won't have to wait in line for a long time to take a photo. You'll feel special because you're in such a secret place where there are almost no people. But the coolest place is even higher, on the 103rd floor. This is a spacious observation deck where celebrities get their photographs taken. It's not a public place, but if you know the right people, you can get there. There are almost no security measures on the site. Only a low ledge between you and an abyss. That's why crowds of people are forbidden from coming here. It's not so easy to get there, and you're unlikely to succeed without a guide. First, you need to choose the right elevator that will take you there. Then you'll go through several engineering rooms filled with pipes, electrical panels, and other technical stuff. The final part of your way is a set of stairs inside a tiny corridor. And here you are, at the top of New York. Now we're in Paris. <laughs> See the Eiffel Tower? Inside it, there are restaurants and observation decks. But if you try hard, you can find a secret apartment. Now it's a museum, but it was built so that people could live in it. The architect of the tower, Gustav Eiffel, created this apartment in 1889 for himself. It's almost at the very top of the Eiffel Tower. Imagine what a beautiful view he observed every day. He was the first and only tenant. No one else could gain access to this place. When the architect passed away, the apartment remained empty for a long time. Only recently, they restored it and turned it into a museum. Inside, the epoch of the last century is recreated. They even put wax figures of Gustav Eiffel, his daughter, and the American inventor Thomas Edison inside the room. This place is filled with an endless stream of passengers, office workers running late, visitors from other cities, noise, and train whistles. At Grand Central Station in New York, among all these sounds, you can hear the sound of a ball hitting a racket, if you're in the right place. A real tennis court is hidden inside New York Central Station. It belongs to a tennis club that arranges corporate games for employees of many companies. The club was opened in the 60s. Now we're moving to London, Charing Cross Road. It isn't easy to find one secret place here. To do this, you need to look carefully at your feet. Do you see these sewer grates in the asphalt? Inside them, you can notice two signs with the name Little Compton Street. Yeah, there's another street right below you. It disappeared from all maps at the end of the 19th century. Charing Cross Road was built over it. The identification signs that you see are part of old engineering tunnels. There's another interesting place in London. It's located in the southeast corner of Trafalgar Square. At first glance, it looks like a thick lamppost, but there are too many tourists walking around. You come closer and realize that one person can easily fit inside the post. The lamppost belongs not to an electrician, but to a police officer. Yeah, this is the smallest police station in the world. It was built in the 1930s and used as a watch post. Officers had to sit there one by one and watch Trafalgar Square that always attracted a lot of pickpockets and all kinds of other criminals. 